Okay, let me get my notebook. So you're recording. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Wednesday evening Zoom class. My name is Lavani, and my company is called IE Green, and I'm really so happy to be doing this with all of you. Tonight, we're going to be making a linguine puttanesca with olives and capers and artichokes and um, fire roasted tomatoes. And it's one of my favorite YouTube recipes because you can pull it together so quick, and so many of the ingredients I always have in my pantry. And one of the things I like to really advocate is for people to keep a well stocked pantry because there's times when you just can't go out and shop, and having a lot of ingredients in your pantry really enables you to whip together different things by looking in your pantry and getting creative. So I'm going to put my wine to the side over here and we're going to get started. Um, the ingredients, I sent everybody the recipe list, so I hope you all have that. Um, I'm going to start with my onion and my olive oil. I'm going to put a little olive oil in the bottom of this wok. I'm using a different wok today, um, a stainless steel wok. A lot of times when I'm using a wok that, um, that is not stainless steel, if I'm doing tomato or tomato-based uh, sauce, you know, the acidity with the metal I don't love. But in stainless steel, it's really no problem at all. So I'm just going to cut this onion. And I've shown you over the past couple of weeks many different ways of cutting an onion. This onion I want diced, so I'm going to cut it in half first. I'm going to just take the skin off of the onion. And all of these onion skins are going to go right into my compost bin, which I put all of my vegetables into. This is my compost bin right here. And all of the vegetable scraps go out into the compost. So when you're cutting an onion, the easiest way, I find, is to cut it in half and lie it flat so it's not going to wiggle around while you're cutting it. And then you're going to use a knife, a vegetable knife, um, whichever shape you like. It works fine. Um, use your finger as the guide and this I've been showing you over the past couple weeks and like anything practice makes it much much easier so just keep working it and you'll get really good at it um, but you let your finger be the guide and so as I'm cutting I'm moving my finger back and my knuckle I bend my finger back so that my knuckle is the furthest extension so that I'm not going to ever cut my finger I just keep moving my finger back and I let the knife do the work. I'm not pressing down really hard at all. I'm just going up and down. And then you take all of the pieces of onion, just turn it, and then you go this way. And you have a beautiful dice. Okay? Do the same thing for the other one. Turn them. I'm going to turn the olive oil on and out. It's getting hot. I'm going to add my onion. Spatula. In with the onions, I want to put some garlic. So I have garlic here. You can either just chop the garlic. And what did I say in the recipe? How many did I say? Two tablespoons worth. So we're going to, we can either chop the garlic or we can use this mini chopper that I love that I wanted to show you. I'll put the garlic right in here. And I'm going to be using some garlic for the Caesar salad dressing later as well. So this uh, mini food processor has an attachment. Now this attachment also has um, an immersion blender that goes on the top. It also has a beater. So it covers a lot of, um, takes care of a lot of needs as far as a kitchen tool goes. Plug it in. Lower this just a little bit. Okay. So 
So the way this works, this just snaps right in like this. But because it's so little, it's really um, just much easier to work with. And it just mixes it up really, really easily like that. So you take my measuring spoon and I want two tablespoons of garlic. I can measure right out of here. One, two, and that's quite a bit of garlic. But I, I think that's what makes this dish so good. And as you all probably know, garlic and ginger, these, um, these root vegetables are so good for you. They are really immune boosters and really um, will keep you healthy. So load up on it. I'm just gonna get a little older for the rest of this garlic so I can empty this out and use it later when I need it. Oh, and I wish you could smell the garlic. Yum. Mm. Great. You just want to regulate the temperature enough so that you're not burning the garlic. The onions can become translucent along with the garlic. And then we're going to add um, some tomato paste. I've been buying tomato paste in these tubes lately. Bavani, I think yeah. we lost the video. Ah, Did thank you. Lose video? Yeah. Thank you. Joe. Hold on a minute. Joe? The video went away. Thank you for telling me, everyone. We will try to get it back. We've been having computer problems all day long. There I am. Oh. <laughs> Hello. I think when I went to get the little container, I must have touched the cord. Thank you. My technician, Joe, my, my other half. I don't know how I could do this without him. So thank you, Joe. Okay, so I was saying I've been buying tomato paste in a, in a tube lately because I can store it in the refrigerator really easily. So I'm gonna move the onions to the side and create a space in the center of my walk, like this. <laughs> I turn the pan, there's no longer space. And I'm gonna put the tomato paste, two tablespoons worth, and you can just eye that, right into the center. And the idea is to cook the tomato paste, because that really brings out a lot of the flavor. So you wanna toast the tomato paste, basically. So you can see what I'm doing right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that cook oh, a little yeah. While that's cooking, I'm gonna cut up my pepper and my mushrooms. Mushrooms first, because those are gonna go in first. Um, actually, I guess in the recipe, I said to put the mushrooms in first. But like, you know, as I've said, very often I don't really use a recipe, so I create the recipe for all of you, but then I'm not always so good at following it, so forgive me. But anyway, I'm gonna cut the mushrooms. And it says Kamini mushrooms, which are ba basically baby bell mushrooms. Um, I had large portobello mushrooms, and so that's what I'm using here. So I'm gonna cut them up where the smaller mushrooms, you don't need to chop as much because they're already small. So I'm just gonna cut these into bite-sized pieces like this. I'm using two mushrooms. Push the tomato sauce to the side and add these mushrooms. Let the mushrooms cook down a bit. While the mushrooms are cooking down, we're going to cut up our pepper. I want to show you um, how I cut my peppers. 
when I'm, if you're dicing your peppers, you can use the whole pepper. It doesn't matter. And that's what I'm doing today. So it really doesn't matter. But um, when I was making a salad and doing a stir fry, someone told me they didn't actually understand what I had showed them. So I just want to show you that if you are cutting, if you are um, doing a stir fry, you don't necessarily want the curve of the pepper. It doesn't look as pretty as a straight julienne strip of pepper. So you cut it in half, take out the seeds, and then I cut the curved part off, the top and the bottom. I cut off, oh. and I save these parts for when I'm making a salad. These can get diced up and be put into the oh. salad. And then this part opens up and is flat for doing, for making a julienne strip which is much prettier in a stir fry than having a curve. So mm. you see it just opens up like that <clears throat> half, and then you just can cut nice little strips like this. And you don't, you know, it's much prettier in a stir fry. So um, for today's purpose, I'm chopping it up, so it doesn't really matter. But I just wanted to go over that because I know someone missed it last time and had asked me um, to please go over it. So I'm just cutting these all up. I'm also going to turn my water on. I have a pot of water in the back. I'm going to turn that on for the pasta. Come on. Ah, I have to get my lighter. Hold on a minute. Welcome whoever just joined. Okay, give my mushrooms a stir. Again, I wish you could smell this because it's really smelling good. So I'm going back to chopping my peppers. Just turning them now from the strips and going, giving them a few cuts. I'm gonna bring these back, because I am gonna cut them. But anyway, usually what I do is if I'm doing a stir fry, the ends that I cut off, I'll save, and I'll use those for a time when I'm dicing or putting them in a salad. And um, that always works for me. Welcome whoever just joined. Okay, I'm going to add these peppers. Okay, so um, we're going to be putting in diced fire roasted tomatoes. Sometimes um, I also get diced fire roasted tomatoes from Trader Joe's that already have hot chili peppers in them. And that works really well in this too. Uh, my Putinesque, I usually like to put some hot red pepper in. So I have um, this Dulce Pimento peppers that I got when I was in Italy from Hosatano. Um, but any red pepper flakes or anything works really well. And depending on how spicy you like it, will depend on how much you'll add. But the fire roasted tomatoes, we're gonna to put in a can of artichoke hearts. These ones are quartered. You don't want the artichoke hearts that are marinated in um, vinegar and olive oil. You just want canned artichoke hearts. And like most of my recipes, this recipe is very flexible. So if you don't have the artichoke hearts, you don't have to put it in. If you wanna add broccoli or spinach or- Oh anything, yeah, I'd like that. This dish, it goes really, really well. So you can do that. I'm just gonna let this mushroom cook a little bit more before I add this, but I'm gonna open these now. Where's my opener? So I am gonna add some white wine to this, actually. So a quarter cup. So whenever I can, I try to buy organic wine, 
great on that dirty dozen list that I shared with you before. The dirty dozen list is a list that's put out by the Environmental Working Group, and it's at ewg.org. You can find this dirty dozen list, and it lists the 12 most important things to try to buy organic. So sometimes a lot of people say, I can't afford organic, or it's too much of a hassle. If you can just buy those 12 ingredients organic, you'll be reducing your pesticide into intake by a lot. Mm -hmm. And grapes, of course, are on that because they're so small and they're so heavily sprayed. So um, when I'm getting wine, I really try to get organic because there's so much of the skin right in there. All right, so I'm just letting the wine cook down a little bit. We're gonna add some herbs now. I have some oregano and part basil. So for the oregano, we're going to put in a teaspoon. And the same with the basil. And this also, you can, you will taste it as you cook it and you'll see whether or not you want to add in. Because part of becoming a chef and cooking yourself is really learning how adjusting the spices and the seasonings changes the flavor. And so that you can be in control and really find that perfect thing for you to get it to the point of the flavor that you like. So we're gonna add some salt and pepper to this. This is, um, this is Himalayan pink salt and some pepper. Mm, and some pepper. Ground pepper. Um, peppers are also on that dirty dozen list. So the yellow pepper that I just use is organic. And when I buy the red pepper flakes, I try to buy organic as well. All right, so these mushrooms are now cooking up. Let me show you what this looks like before I add the fire roasted tomatoes. Can you all see that? Okay, so we want the mushrooms to be getting soft. I'm going to add these fire roasted tomatoes, a whole large can. Now I can turn the heat up a little bit more. And the artichoke cart, whoa. The artichoke carts you actually want to drain. Okay, they're packed in juice, and that we don't want them to. So I'm just going to go over the sinking and drain out part of the parts. These are already, like I said, they're already quartered, so they can go in just as is. They don't need to be cut anymore. Then we want to add a couple of apples and two tablespoons of capers, a couple of small capers. At Trader Joe's, there's these capers. Whole Foods, you can get organic capers. Very often, I'm buying a huge, large jar at Restaurant Depot or some place. Um, Costco also sells the really large jars. So depending on how much you like capers and how quick you go through them, um, normally I'm entertaining a lot, so we go through it a lot. Uh, the jar I have right now has been lasting a really long time. So the olives, a cup of olives, and we're going to slice them up a bit. Okay. You can either cut them in half or cut them in thirds, depending on what we like. I'm going to lower this a little bit. And we're going to let this cook together to bring all the flavors together um, and evaporate some of the juice so that the sauce gets just a little bit thicker. And this is also something you can um, decide on whether you think this is too many olives. You can cut back on the olives. It's you know all personal choice. So obviously, I'm putting in a lot of olives. We like olives here. Um, I'm going to make a whole pound of pasta, but I'm not going to use the whole pound of pasta because we won't eat that. And it's better to save the pasta separate and add the sauce later. So I'm going to put all these olives right into this sauce here. 
along with my two tablespoons of paper. You can already see how beautiful this is looking. And then when we put the fresh parsley in, it's really going to brighten it up. Okay, so I want to show you the pasta I'm using. Um, I'm using organic brown rice and quinoa pasta. Oh, that sounds good. Whatever pasta you like. Um, you know, we kind of like spaghetti shaped pasta, but uh, we also do penne or whatever. You can do whole wheat pasta. You can, this is a gluten free pasta. We're not gluten free, but I actually honestly like this pasta better than whole wheat pasta. It's lighter. So whole wheat pasta sometimes can tend to be um, kind of grainy or heavier mm. than regular semolina pasta, which of course is probably my favorite. But this is really great. It's brown rice quinoa pasta. So we'll be using that pasta. But we're waiting for the water to boil. I'm going to add some salt to the water. And I have a big box here of just regular iodized salt. Sometimes I'll put the Himalayan pink salt in, but you don't want to waste really good, expensive salt in, in water. So, um, And people always ask, how much salt do you put in? You put in enough salt so that the water just tastes a little salty. Um, not too much, but you want to add salt so that the pasta takes on some salt. Okay, I'm still waiting for the pasta water to cook. Let me just give this cutting board a wipe. And then we're going to chop up our parsley. Right. Now, I've also mentioned in classes before that I love this salad spinner. I've already washed the parsley and spun it dry. And this salad spinner is a pull string salad spinner. Oh, yeah, I got to get one of those. So, um, it gets the herbs drier than any other salad spinner and we'll be using it in just a little bit but it actually has a break to just push that button so we'll be using that for the salad in just a little bit but i already washed the parsley and i have that right here so we'll off just a little bit let me add, actually add the red pepper flakes right now so that can start getting in here and so you can start with like a quarter, a quarter teaspoon's worth, um, and taste it, and then decide if you want to add more. In the refrigerator, if you have leftover salt, the um, spicy the peppers add out more. So you want to be mindful of that. Okay, so I'm going to chop up this um, parsley. The recipe calls for a lot of parsley, so I think it calls for a half a cup. Let's see. Yeah, half a cup of chopped parsley. So we're going to just start chopping this up. And I don't recommend using the Cuisinart or the food processor for chopping parsley. Very often it, it kind of purees it more than um, chopping it. You really want the parsley to be large flakes and not, um, not get mushy. You really want it to stay individual. And if you want to throw in some fresh basil, if you have fresh basil, that works really well in this recipe as well. Okay, so I'm going to get a spoon. And when I'm tasting sauce that other people are going to be eating, you know, as a chef, very often I'm cooking not meant just for my family, I'm cooking for other people too. And so if you taste it from a spoon, you don't want to ever put that same spoon into the, the pot, obviously because of your saliva. And actually your saliva is what starts the digestion process. So food will spoil much quicker. I always am yelling at my daughter, actually, when she lived here, she's not here anymore, but when she lived here, she'd open the refrigerator and eat right out of a container in the refrigerator. 
and that was just making the food spoil quicker. So I always take the large spoon and a small spoon. So I always know the large spoon goes into it and the small spoon goes into my mouth. And that way I never mix up which spoon went into the dish. So anyway, take the large spoon in, put it into the small one, and give it a taste. Wow. It's great. I'm going to add a little bit wow. of salt, although the capers and the olives actually have quite a bit of salt in it. And I'm also going to give it a little bit more pepper spice. And I'm going to add most of this parsley. I'm going to save a little bit of the parsley for garnish after, okay? But the rest of it is going to go right in. this now. This is the dish. Um, the sauce is really ready to go. I'm going to leave it on simmering. So it just brings the flavors together more and brings the flavors out. I'll taste it again before we actually put it onto the pasta. I'm waiting for the water to boil. So now I'm going to get started with the salad dressing. I want to show you how to make that. Mm -hmm. Salad dressing is one of our favorites. And when my husband and I stopped eating fish, it was one of the things that we missed. So, of course, we needed to come up with a vegan option. So, I'm going to take my little mini food processor again. Here I put the leaves. One minute while I find that. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. Dang it. Okay. So, I have this. Um, I am going to add a couple cloves of garlic. And here we go. Two cloves of garlic. I'm going to add some mustard. <clears throat> and we just like that. one tablespoon of mustard. We're going to put some parsley in here. Actually, I want to put parsley that's not already chopped. Put a little parsley in. We need some olive oil. So we want, let me get a measuring spoon, excuse me, measuring cup. Okay, half a cup of olive oil. Go right into this mixer. And then it says juice of two lemons. These lemons that I have bought today actually are quite large. So I'm going to start with one and a half lemons. When you're squeezing lemons, you always want to roll them first. That loosens up the juice. And I have a lemon squeezer, which is great. You can also use this. I have this in my refrigerator at all times. If I need lemon juice quickly, this is organic lemon juice. Um, Whole Foods also has their own brand. Doesn't really matter which brand, but it's great to have it in the refrigerator. When you can have fresh organic lemon, all the better. The way this works is actually counterintuitive. I would, you would think that you would put it in cut side up so that when the squeeze part goes in, you're squeezing the pulp. But you're actually going to do it the other way around, so that you're turning it inside out. I oh. Hmm. Squeeze down. You can see how much juice comes out. And then you have it oh. after. And then I have another one that's green for limes. Um, whoops. Hmm. So lemon juice, olive oil. Yeah, I'm going to do one more half. And we'll see how it is after that before I add the last half. Okay, these lemons. I want some black pepper in here. You can do fresh black pepper, or I'm gonna cheat and just use a little bit of pepper that I have right here, some organic black pepper. Now I'm gonna put capers in. 
two teaspoons of capers is instead of, um, actually two tablespoons of capers, I already mentioned that. This is instead of the anchovies. This is what's gonna give it that saltiness that the anchovies would have. Oh, the capers do that, huh? And then we're gonna add, instead of Parmesan cheese, nutritional yeast. Good tasting nutritional yeast is such a great, um, it's really nutritious, obviously. It's very high in um, B vitamins, especially B12, which is very hard for vegetarians to get. Um, but it also has a, an umami flavor. It adds a little bit like the Parmesan cheese would to it. So we're gonna add just a quarter cup of this. Right in, like that. Mm. A wee drop of salt. And I just need the top now. Mustard I put in. Do this parsley. Okay, We're ready to go. So again, you just press this top and just gonna hold it like so. I love the sound of that. <laughs> Here's the Caesar salad dressing. It's thick like Ooh. Caesar salad dressing. Wow. It's delicious. Tastes just tastes so much like it. You would not miss the anchovies at all. Bavani, if you didn't want to use oil, could you use like a silken tofu or it wouldn't work for this? Yes, you can. Uh, you know, I actually have experimented using tofu often in salad dressings instead of the oil. Um, oh. For instance, like my Thousand Island dressing, I don't use mayonnaise at all. I use tofu instead, you know, for the creaminess. Same for making a, a ranch dressing. So you can. You might want to use a little bit of oil um, to just give it a little bit more body. But you can definitely use some tofu instead. I would definitely try that. Okay, so I want to wash my salad and spin it. No way to put the water Okay, so for the salad, we're just going to chop this up. And depending on how many people you are cooking for, and then how much salad you're going to put in, you're going to have the salad dressing I made today, there will be leftover salad dressing because I won't need it all for this salad. But it lasts in the refrigerator for a while, so you don't have to rush to eat it. So I'm just going to rinse this. What would a Caesar salad dress salad be without some organic croutons? So the croutons can go on as a garnish after. So I'm going to pour a little bit of the salad dressing on. Vegan um, mock Parmesan cheese. I wanted to put them on for a visual at the end. Like I've said before, I don't really find that they add much flavor. It's really just a visual thing. So you put the croutons on, which is also visual. A little bit of fresh parsley. And this is your Caesar salad, and it's as good as yeah. any salad you're going to get in a restaurant. I promise. That over here. 
get this okay, water is finally boiling. One thing about the um, gluten-free pastas, and you do need to put it under water afterwards because the starch from the brown rice and the quinoa really goes all over is all over the pasta and um, makes it gummy or makes it stick together. So you really need to rinse that off before you add the sauce to it. And you can rinse it off with warm water too. It doesn't have to be cold water. You're not so much worrying about stopping the cooking as you are. Um, trying to get that um, that starch off of it. I'm just going to give it a little stir. I'm going to taste this sauce again because it's smelling so good. I wish you could all smell it. Really good. Yeah, my pasta bowl. Pasta pot. This has a a strainer or a colander built right into the pasta pot, so I just have to lift it up. And if I'm making pasta that's not um, gluten free. You go right from the pasta pot into the larger pot without rinsing it and makes it very easy to work. It also allows you to retain the pasta water. Very often when I'm like the, um, I don't know how many of you saw the mushroom carbonara that I posted this week for our anniversary dinner. Oh yeah, that looked great. So that's a relatively dry pasta. You know, real carbonara is not a cream sauce, although in a lot of restaurants they show you a carbonara sauce that almost looks like an Alfredo sauce. Traditional carbonara sauce is made with egg yolk, not with any cream at all. And so it's a drier pasta, but it needed a little bit of moisture, and so I used the pasta water. And a lot of recipes will tell you to reserve, you know, a cup of the pasta water to thin out the, um, to thin out the Pasta water still has some of the starch in it from the pasta, so it's not just adding water, um, but it's, you know, at the same time not adding more oil or more tomatoes or something like that. And so now we're just waiting for the pasta to cook. Anyone have any questions about anything that we've been teaching you or any other classes from other weeks? For those of you that might have joined after I asked um, this question, I'm also looking for continue these um, and I wanted to know and get feedback from everybody this this five to six o'clock time is good for you or whether six to seven would be better. I know for many people I've heard, you know, that they'd love to join but five o'clock a little too early, they're still doing work and they're just not ready. So six to seven might be a better time. I thought I was doing it for a lot of young moms to get the dinner on the table for their kids by six, but that doesn't seem to be most of the people showing up. So um, I'm not gonna take a poll right now, but if you could send me an email or at Bhavani at IE Green, or um, just send me a text. Uh, my cell phone number, most of you know, is 516-238-3616. Send me a text and just let me know um, if this time is preferable for you or whether you would like it better if I go to six to seven. And I'm gonna go, go on consensus and see what people say and, um, and make a change if that works better for people. I know in the summertime, you know, I'm outside in the garden a lot of the time. And so in order to be ready by five, I'm coming in at three, to clean up and get ready. So I wouldn't mind an extra hour myself. Maybe we could put it in and you'll get it right away. What's that? We could put what we prefer in the chat and you'll get it right away. Yes, you can do that. Um, I can't get it right now, but I can look afterwards. What I can get right now is my glass of wine. Because I haven't had any since the very beginning. <laughs> and it's time to drink some wine. How many of you, anybody out there cooking with me? Or most of you watching? Any cookers? 
We're cooking with you. Oh, good. No. As you can figure out. <laughs> oh, I should have spoke the pasta at the beginning because this recipe is ready. That's how quick it comes together. Um, like I said, you can add a, a green vegetable to this if you want, with the green beans, your broccoli, 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 anything that you might want. I wasn't going to do that since I was having a salad on the side. So, any of you follow me on Facebook? During this quarantine, I've started making sourdough bread, and I've really been enjoying that. I'll show you right now. I'm creating my lemon. I'll show you what that looks like. I fed the starter last night, and then overnight and came down this morning and had lots of bubbles and you can see all the bubbles in this um, starter here and so this will become my leaven for the bread instead of yeast and so tonight after the class I'm going to add um, some more flour to this feed it again and let it sit overnight and then tomorrow will be the day for making the bread so that's been a whole new adventure for me I've made bread a lot over the years, but never sourdough because I never have the patience to like do something that takes a few days. But this has really been um, something that I've been able to do during this quarantine time. It's really fun. Um, I also actually making lots of cookies. I <laughs> went on Monday to the Glencoe Food Pantry which started when we closed down the school and there's so many kids in that school that really are dependent on their lunches and breakfast from the school district. And the families really just didn't have enough food so they started this food pantry. And Rising Tide, one of our local natural food markets that's just so wonderful, they donated some organic oats and some raisins and some chocolate chips. And so I went in and I made some vegan, I made about 800 cookies on um, for them to have That's our girl. <laughs> and so there were vegan chocolate chip cookies and vegan raisin cookies, and they were just great. So if anyone's interested in that recipe, although it wasn't the healthiest because I did use sugar. Um, you know, if I was doing it just for my family, I would prefer to use maple syrup or honey even. But we had to use what we had. All right, let's see if this pasta is ready. Oh, one more minute. Bear with me. One more minute. I guess I'll have to drink some more wine. So, anybody out there want to tell me what you've been cooking up? I'd love to hear. Uh, I, made, I, made, I made cookies today, too. What kind? Uh, chocolate almond. I used a cup of almond butter, no flour, two tablespoons of cocoa, sweetener, mm. vanilla, one egg, and that's it. What nice. is flour? What did you use for the sweetener? I used uh, oh. erythritol. What is that? It is, uh, it's a, it's a uh, uh, what's it called? A, um, a sugar alcohol. Uh -huh. And I use maple extract. So instead of having a high glycemic uh, index like maple syrup, it has a lower value. And when you add the maple extract and the vanilla, you still get the same flavoring. Uh huh. Sounds good. Yeah, they were delicious and very easy. Good. Well, here's my little cookie platter. Um, I have cookies that I've made that are great. I put, posted that recipe. This, these are the oatmeal raisin cookies, mm. oatmeal chocolate chip. We broke that up. These are my usual Linzer tarts that are so easy to make. Love them. Yeah. And so that's the cookie selection. But it's so funny. It's like I'll eat the cookie when I first make it, and then it sits here. 
I'm not so interested after the first day that I made. All right, this pasta's got to be ready by now. Let's see. All right. Perfect. All right, I'm going to take this pasta over to the sink. Run it under a little water. Like I said, I'm running it under water to remove that starch. Gluten-free pasta, I think, cooks down a little bit. You never quite as, like, as much as a pound of regular pasta. Okay, so garnish it with some of this fresh pasta that we see on the side. Our dinner for tonight, the Putin pasta. Mm. And I'll just show you what this looks like when we stir it in a little bit. Mm. Just such a great, easy dish to make. And um, let me get a little dish and I'm gonna taste it and make sure it's as good as it looks. this dish really um, I'm sure once you all make it it will become one of your favorites too because it's also it's impressive people love it and you can whip it so fast you saw how quick it came together what took the longest was cooking the pasta mm -hmm. mm. it's great and the pasta is done perfectly you don't want to overcook the pasta oh, wonderful. so that's it everyone yum <laughs> Yummy. Joining me. And uh, let me know whether five or six would be better for you. And I hope to see you all again next week for our coconut encrusted tofu with a mint salsa. Bye for now. Thank you, Bhavani. Bye, Bhavani. Bye. Thank you. Bye.